Welcome to Strategy Battle Gamers to another GBHL YouTube video. You're here with your host, GBHL Damien, and this is my hobby vlog number 40. Um, so, if you've been ho ho uh, following my hobby vlogs of late, you know that last week I finished my sixth Gundabad, Gundabads of Shields, and the Gundabad Captain, which completed my first warband of Gundabads for um, Warhammer World Doubles. I'm going to be carrying on uh, with my second warband a bit uh, in the probably next week, but just before that, I've got a few bits that I want to get sorted first, and I'm going to be doing something a bit different this week because I've actually got um, four days off work this week, so I've got a good chance to do some um, hobby stuff. Now I've got four days off work, but I've got a lot of other stuff going on. Um, we're currently decorating the house um, in particular, so that's going to use up a lot of my time. But I want to make sure that having taken this time off as holiday, I still get to spend some decent time doing some hobby. So um, what I've decided to do is try and complete um, four different projects in these four days. Which, um, if you're anything like me, or I don't know if you're anything like me, but if you follow these vlogs and you know my work rate, you think this might be a bit ambitious. But um, I'm quite cautiously optimistic about it. And um, that's what I'm going to be trying to do. So I'm calling this essentially my four things in four hours in four days. Because I think that I can roughly spend about four hours a day um, working on this hobby stuff. And I think that should be enough to complete one of these tasks each day. So um, that's my hope. And um, I'll kind of be updating you throughout the week and with how that's gone. So um, I'll talk you through the four things now and by the end of the week we'll see how much got done. So the first thing is my Spider Queen, which you've seen before, but I don't think you'd seen base coated and shaded. So this is what I've gone for. It's a Rakarth base coat with a um, Ogryn flesh and or Rakeland flesh shade it is now I think isn't it um, uh, shade and then the legs are still Legion drab with a um, uh, what is that uh, Agrax, Earth, uh, Agrax Earth shade wash um, so I've deliberately gone with the kind of brown legs um, which match my Merkwood spiders and again to I think I said a couple of weeks ago I didn't want it to just be a black blob and I went with this kind of fleshy skin tone. Um, this stuff to me looks like it should be skin and flesh. It doesn't look particularly hairy to me. So I thought it should have this kind of fleshy tone. Now that said, once I've done it, I, I'm not overly keen on it. I like the idea of the tips, the raised bits being this colour, but I think the, the shadows and the shading need to be darker. So what I'm now going to start doing is kind of working in some kind of... Some Kind of, you can see you've almost got a kind of grey hue to some of the shading on this part of the body. But I'm going to work in a kind of darker, a like dark grey or dark browns into the kind of shades in that, and hopefully leave the kind of um, bits that the spiders are coming out of the holes as kind of quite vile, fleshy-looking bits. That's the, that's the kind of goal for that. Now it's um, it's one model, but hopefully because there's not too much overt detail on it, I think I'll be able to get that done. Um, sort of in this day. So that is that is one of my projects, um, for, the, for the first project I'm going to start working on. I'm actually going to start working on that one um, a bit later today probably. Um, and alongside that I'll be doing this, which I also showed off um, a couple of weeks ago, which is the um, scenic base I've made for it. So it's on a 60mm base, and as I showed it's got these holes drilled into um, for where the legs will eventually sit. And I'm going to um, paint that up. Uh, this shouldn't take long at all. Um, it's just going to be a bunch of dry brushing with my different um, uh, scenery tester pots um, that I've got um, so I don't want to spend too much time at all about that but I'm hoping that all told this thing will probably take about half an hour and the spider will then take three and a half hours or something that's the hope and um, that's where I'm going to start this week on um, that bit of hobby so that's day one um, in four hours four hours I should hopefully be able to get that done day two is this guy um, you've seen him before, I think you've seen him shaded as well, I believe. Um, but this is Gandalf the Grey Mounted, lovely model. And day two will be Gandalf. Um, so just Gandalf. Um, I think I can dedicate four hours to that, um, highlighting him up and hopefully get him finished. That's um, my hope. I don't think that's too uh, sort of extreme. That will hopefully be quite a nice um, day's work. Day three, perhaps unsurprisingly then, will be the horse. Um, Gandalf's horse. So I'm essentially giving myself eight hours on this guy alone, which I think should be more than enough. But I want to, I want to do, try and do at least a really good job on him. Um, and so I'm thinking maybe if Gandalf takes a little longer, the horse won't take quite as long. That sort of thing. But um, that's my hopes. So that's days two and three. Um, will be Gandalf and the horse. And finally, on day four, I'm going to be doing these guys. Which is my next six Gundabads, which is three shields and three spears and Bulk, who's going to be the leader of my doubles force. Um, so, 
these guys I'm going to assemble. I'm not hoping to get these painted. The, the day four job that will take four hours is assembling these guys. Maybe Bulg as well. Definitely these six. I need these assembled so I can start painting them. But if I get a bit of spare time, I'll do Bulg as well. And remember, I'm doing conversions on these, which makes them take a little bit longer. I seem to remember, um, you might be able to find it in the hobby vlog where I assembled them, that these models took about half an hour each to clean up fully and assemble. Um, so six of them, you know, there's your um, there's three hours of the project already, and that's not really allowing. I can't remember if that allowed for green stuffing as well, which I'll need to do in the converting and so on and so forth. But um, that'll be a, my last day um, in this hobby vlog, hopefully assembling these guys and trying to create six more unique poses. So what I'm going to do for those is I'm going to have my existing warband um, kind of assembled in front of me, so I can see what kind of which head swaps I did and which. And weapon swaps I did to the various bodies, and then try and assemble these six into um, into some different poses. Very hopeful of getting six more decent poses out of this. I think the tough thing is going to be my next six, my final six Gundabads, um when they arrive. Um, they've I've actually got them coming into my local games workshop, and I haven't picked them up yet. But um, I hate cleaning these models up, so I'm very much deliberately doing these six on their own. Um, and then once I've assembled them and probably when I've painted them a bit I'll then go and assemble the other six so it kind of breaks the process up a bit and yeah alongside that I'm going to try and assemble bulk so that is this week's hobby vlog um, I'm going to be very very impressed with myself if I manage to finish the Spider Queen finish Gandalf and get the other stuff um, uh, assembled but equally I think it's quite achievable given that I've got a fair bit of time off work this week so there you go um, I should be coming back with a fair few updates um, over the next week at least one a day to show whether or not I completed each project um, I will stick with each project so if I don't finish the spider queen in day one I'll keep going until the spider queen's done and so on and so forth so I do have some definite progress by the end of the week at the very least um, but yeah that's what I'm doing and I will um, come back soon hopefully And here we are for uh, day one of uh, my little three or four, uh, four day challenge. Um, and as I mentioned, first up was the Spider Queen. So I'm going to be working on this. I've got um, a lot of painting ahead of me uh, today. Um, we've got a fair, fairly free day. And so I'm hoping that I'll be able to um, finish this little lady in one day. Um, knowing me, probably not, but we'll, um, we'll certainly give it a go. Uh, as I might have mentioned in that intro video, um, this is being painted with my um, scenery paints, so I'll be getting onto that later. I'm going to start um, trying to work up the Spider Queen herself, which I think I might mention um, is kind of what I was going for with this flesh tone, um, but also not quite right. So I'm going to basically just experiment. I don't really have a plan. I'm just going to start working her up, trying to make the body darker, but leaving these fleshy bits exposed. And over here I've got some fair, oh, I should probably say, um, you know, look away if you're arachnophobic. <laughs> um, but over here I've got some fairly hideous um, reference material. I've basically got a load of pictures of spiders. I don't know how well they're lighting up, but these are generally brown or strangely coloured spiders, which is what I want to go for. I quite like this thing. It's a huntsman spider. Um, that's quite similar to the, one I, the idea I've got where it's got this kind of red body at the back and a creepy browny black colour scheme for the hair. But um, I'm going to be drawing on some of these and basically just um, winging it a bit to be honest. But hopefully um, I'll be able to come back with some progress a bit later. So we are back and it is update time and I'm pleased to announce that at the end of day one of this little challenge I finished day one's um, job well, as much as I possibly can. So firstly here is the uh, ruin, my um, spider queen base, which I'm being a bit gentle with because the glue is still drying. But um, this has now been painted. Um, this is a really simple job, it took I don't know, half an hour total, it's just a whole bunch of dry brushing. And I used um, these little things. Um, I'm not sure what I've used before, you might have seen these. These are Dulux test, point, test Pots, other paint brands are available. And I got these from Homebase, and I think they're great for scenery in terms of the amount of paint you get in them and the price, really, really good. And uh, obviously what you can do is take across um, colours um, that are existing and get them to match them. So I've got a whole load of Citadel colours mixed up. So I'm not sure exactly which ones these are, this could be the um, Rhinox Hide one. I think this might be Codex Grey. But I've got a bunch of these um, painted up and they're just good for doing our scenery. So I started dry brushing this, and I started off with this kind of grey colour, which is how I've always done stone um, traditionally. But um, recent kind of various blogs and stuff have kind of made me see how um, stone should have browns and greens in it as well. So I then basically just started dry brushing kind of arbitrarily 
we put a bit of green into it, a bit of brown into it here to give it this kind of, so it doesn't look like cold um, grey and white. I'm not sure how well it, it still looks pretty grey on the on the camera, but there's actually a lot of um, greens and browns in there. I hope that you can see that um, just make it look a lot more natural. I was really happy how it turned out. And once I'd kind of done some fairly um, broad splashing, dry brushing onto that, I then um, went to my little Citadel colour pots and I dry brushed it with, I think, Bane Blade Brown and then Rakath Flesh very lightly, just to bring it out. And I'm really actually very happy with how that came out. It's um, it's a nice colour. It looks quite um, natural stone, I think. Um, so there is that. Um, so yeah, the stone base is um, completely finished and as you can see I've just glued the sand down to it so that will just need to dry and then I'll be um, painting the base of that tomorrow and once the base of that is painted I'll be putting this little lady on so uh, this is my spider queen and she is also finished as went the plan so um, here she is gribbly and I'm really really pleased with her she was a lot of fun to paint um, I wouldn't want to do multiple versions of it because I really didn't know, I can't really tell you how I did it but the fun thing about doing one model like this that's relatively small is you can just really keep experimenting and chucking different colours on so you'll see that she looks, particularly the um, kind of sack at the back looks quite different to how it did at the start of the day um, where it was that kind of pinky colour and I've kind of maintained those um, little raised bits as I wanted but I've made her body sack a lot darker essentially and I've basically just done this by experimenting with um, these colours. So I've got a whole bunch of browns here. There's Rakath Flesh, um, Bane Blade Brown, Karak Stone, Rhinox High, Steel Legion Drab, Doom Ball Brown, and um, Gorthor Brown. Um, I used Red Gore and Tusk Gore fur for the uh, mouth parts and Carabur Crimson for a wash in there. And then I've got some greys in here that we should see, which are Eschen Grey, Codex Grey, Pallid Witch Flesh, and Abaddon Black. And those are the colours I used for the, um, for the various parts of it. And basically, just um, just experimented. I wasn't happy at all at the start of the day with that pink colour, and I um, I started just chucking on washes and kind of you know not not washes in the sense of um, the washes you buy, but just thinning down paint a lot and um, chucking it into the recesses. And at one point, she went a bit red and a bit purple. So then I started adding more brown and more grey, and eventually, um, kind of got got to this point that I really liked where she's got a kind of dark dark body but the bits that are raised um, do look kind of flesh coloured like a pallid kind of flesh which is exactly the look I went for um, all the little spiders were painted individually so the spider legs were picked out I think in crack stone or something like that just to make them stand out a bit um, and what I basically did was I'd do um, I did like a I'd dry brush and then I'd make a very 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 thin wash and chuck that all over it and what that does, it means the dry brush picks out the highlights, but then the thin wash kind of covers up the fact you dry brushed it in a way, and it kind of smooths it out again. It's a technique I've used before, used it on my white warg, and it seems to work really, really well. And um, the head I did more by hand, so this has all been um, painted in, like the head piece was painted, the, the mouth I'm really happy with, that was the tusk or flesh, and then tusk or flesh mixed with um, Bane Blade Brown, probably, which seems to be my go-to mixture of choice at the moment. And you can also see she's got, I don't know what they're meant to be, but she's got these little bumps around her as well, these little spots. And I just painted them um, in quite a human way, actually. It's kind of, they were tusk or flesh to begin with, and then washed with a kind of dark brown, and then um, kind of pallid witch flesh, um, I think, uh, Ricard flesh was kind of put on the top, so she almost looks like she's got these white heads all over her, which is grim and not particularly natural, I think, but quite, um, I think it's quite effective. I think it works quite well. So um, there she is, I really, lots of little spiders over her have been picked out, and I'm really, really happy with this, I think she looks great. It achieved my kind of goal of um, making her look not like a black blob, which I've seen a lot of spider queens doing, like a black and grey kind of dry brushed blob, I really didn't want that. And I'm really quite happy with um, how, she's, how she's turned out in the end. And um, so, yeah, there she is. Now I'd really love to put her on the base. Um, and I could put it on the base now, but because I need to paint this, I don't want to be kind of tipping it upside down and dry brushing it with her on. So she'll be the last thing, the, uh, attaching her to the base will be the last thing I do. So, um, and I'm a bit worried about how well that's going to go. But given that she's quite a heavy metal model, and I've basically only got these 
my little holes that I drilled into here to kind of support her. But we'll see. Hopefully, as long as I'm careful and then I'm very gentle with it, it should look um, pretty cool. But that's the plan, and that is my Spider Queen finished, which also means I'm on track for my um, four, day, four things in four hours and four days. Um, day one is complete, and the Spider Queen is complete. I've got a bit of time to do, on, obviously, on the base tomorrow, but um, it's as complete as, um, as can be. So there we go. So I'll probably pop back um, sometime tomorrow with a kind of final um, little clip showing you uh, the finished thing all assembled. But um, until then, that is my Spider Queen, and I'm pretty damn chuffed with how she came out, to be honest. Enjoyed painting that today. I was listening to the Clash of Kings audiobook, and um, just had a good few hours that I quite enjoyed that indeed. So there we go. That was today's work. Um, the Spider Queen and her base, which I've both now finished. And as of tomorrow, I'm going to begin work on Gandalf the Grey. So we'll um, come back with our next update. Okay, so it's time for an update. Um, you saw this uh, was painted yesterday, and today I have um, done all the basing on it. So I've based it in my normal way with my sander stuff, but then I kind of went a bit um, uh, in depth with the uh, foliage and stuff because I just wanted to break the stone up a bit. So I've added all these kind of uh, vines of leaves um, around it, kind of growing up to make it look up a bit overgrown and dull gouldery, which is what I'm going for, of course. And then I've added a few little um, tufts of grass, which I use every now and again. Um, also with some kind of autumn leaves breaking through the stone, um, which I think works quite well. So um, that's that. And then in this gap here, I don't know if you can see, I've added in a big um, patch of lichen. That's just to kind of fill that kind of gap that was under there. And we just painted it all black and brown in there, so if you can see anything through, um, it wouldn't show it up, but that's just to kind of cover up that gap. I'm going to put this bush in there like that. Um, so there we go. There is the um, base, which I'm really quite chuffed with. And to do that, I used uh, this is the tufts I used, little autumn tufts, and these are from Mini Nature, and these are tufts with leaves late fall. And the um, ivy stuff, the leaves, I used again. It's Mini Nature, oak foliage late fall. And it's, uh, it's this stuff here I used. And then the lichen is just this uh, kind of bag of lichen that I put in there. So now um, that's finished. Um, you've already seen the Spider Queen finished. And now I get this a bit I've absolutely been dreading um, for ages, which is putting this little lady onto here and hoping that um, those kind of uh, holes all line up to her legs and um, that she'll be supported on there. But um, we will see when I come back when she's hopefully completely finished. And she is done. There we go. I have attached her to the base and I'm very pleased with the result. It's been around. Um, perhaps as expected, I think the legs had um, moved or something, or something had changed at some point over the process. So I did have to um, retweak the legs a bit, which I was terrified about doing um, based on the fact that she was already painted. But uh, that was the benefit of um, this being a metal model that I was able to just bend the legs back so that this one landed in that hole um, and these two, uh, that one landed in the hole that was under there and that one landed in that one. Uh, the fourth leg that was a contact point, which was over here, was actually meant to go in a little hole down here but had clearly um, changed quite a lot to set up here. But um, so what I ended up doing is just putting it in there and then pushing these leaves into that hole to cover it up, um, which worked quite well. I've also attached a couple of leaves um, down here, um, just over the holes, just glued those on to just cover those little bits of the holes there. Same with those two, just to cover that up a bit. I think that one worked quite well, looks like she's got to fit in a crack. And she actually feels relatively, I don't want to push my luck on this, but the whole piece feels relatively solid. It wasn't too hard to attach her, so hopefully those, um, the fact that the weight's kind of pushing down on her um, will hopefully mean those joints kind of hold up. But um, there we go, there is my Spider Queen, who I'm really, really chuffed with. Um, I was just put this up on the um, group picture of this, and I was saying that I absolutely, I think I've said this at some point in the boss, but I absolutely hated this model um, when it came out. I just got one out of completion's sake, because I like the old spider theme. But, um, I despised the model, but kind of this conversion I've done on it, it's not really a conversion, it's a repose and the scenic base just made me absolutely fall in love with it and I'm really really chuffed with um, how she's come out 
all told. I'm really glad I spent the extra time on the base today. Um, like applying all those leaves, I think that's really made that pop. And um, I just think it's a very, very cool pose. I think it looks, it achieves that effect I wanted where you can kind of look through and, you know, she's not sitting on the floor or anything. It looks like the sort of pose a spider would have. And um, the colour scheme is what I wanted as well. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with this. Um, it's been a while since I've been utterly this chuffed or something. And as I said at the start of this project, I think, um, I don't have a lot of monsters. So it's cool to get another kind of funky... Um, monster added to my collection but there she is um, so yeah that's my little piece and she will definitely be featuring in issue 4 of SPG magazine so that's the spider queen done and now I'll be moving on to Gandalf so welcome to day 2 and part 2 of my challenge um, I was able to successfully finish the spider queen yesterday um, finished off the base earlier today as you saw and then today's main job is this guy um, Gandalf on horse, I'm now going to crack on with him so he's the last model I need to paint up for issue 4 of SPG Magazine which will be fit, will be playing the battle report of next weekend um, so as I said in the blurb um, I'm doing him on one day and the horse on another day um, so I'm going to start with him because I always find when painting cavalry models that you kind of hold the horse sometimes to um, to get into the figure so I always find it easy to do that I'm going to start with a little bit of dry brushing though I'm going to dry brush the horse's tail a bit and dry brush Gandalf's beard um, uh, the tail and the uh, uh, mane. Don't you say a mane? I don't know. Hair? Who knows? Does anyone care? Probably not. Um, so dry brush that because that will get um, kind of sort of paint everywhere before I start um, bringing everything else up. But I'm going to paint this like the um, Hobbit horse. I'm going to get a picture of um, Gandalf on his horse from the um, Hobbit. He's on that big Shire horse and um, hopefully um, go for that kind of colour scheme. I've um, been painting a fair few Gandalfs. Um, of relatively late, so um, we're we'll good to get another one done. That's a lovely one. So yeah, I'll come back when I've got some progress. So I've been painting for a couple of hours now, and I've got a bit of an update. Um, he's obviously still far from finished, but I've started applying a lot of um, various layers in, so I just thought I'd show you what he's like at this stage of the process. So um, if you have a look around here, um, I have managed, I don't know how well this will show up at all, but I have managed to finish his face. Is there any chance of getting in there? Might be able to get lucky there. No, it's pretty tough to see. And the shadow, but his face is done now. I'm quite pleased with that. I've done the flesh on his hand. I might do a bit more work on his hand. Um, his rose have just had one coat of um, of grey put over it as a kind of you know re highlight. I haven't done a lot of work on that. Um, bit did a little work on his beard. Uh, the hat's been gone over. Give it another highlight. Um, you'll also notice that I've, uh, I've jumped ahead in my scheme and started work on the horse as well, putting in the um, start of the fat locks down there, like the shy horse, and on his head up here, which I'm quite pleased with. I've done the horse's eyes as well. I was quite pleased with them. He came out like that. There he is. Um, and again, the horse has all been um, given a brown um, coat again. I'll start working up the highlights of that soon. Um, so yeah, I've actually started working on the horse at the same time as Gandalf, just to um, kind of keep it in, keep the project interesting for me. There's there's a lot of different bits and bobs on this model, so um, whenever I get bored with doing the beard or doing the cloak or something, I can move on to something else, which is quite good fun. So it might be that I end up spending um, two days working on both of these rather than kind of one day on Gandalf and one day on the horse. But um, yeah, he's he's coming along nicely. I'm quite enjoying painting him and um, listening to an audiobook. But yeah, there we go. And just a brief little update, and I'll um, come back when I've got a little more. And here he is. Gandalf is finished. Gandalf the Grey mounted there, and he's been complete, completed, and based. So this is um, obviously a bit after you saw him left, last even, and a fair bit more um, highlights on him. And there he is, complete. Um, I'm pretty pleased with him. The, the cloak didn't come out as well as I'd hoped it would. Um, it's, I seem to have like mixed luck with Gandalf the Grace. Um, sometimes he, sometimes they come out well. Sometimes the colours just don't kind of work as well. And I was just particularly on the back here. I was just a bit disappointed with it potentially. But um, there's nothing for it. I, I chucked loads of layers at it. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I was just um, mixing up dark greys and putting them in the recesses, and then a light grey and mixing it um, on top, and just repeating that kind of strategy for a while. And I hope it um, came out alright. I think it, I think it's not too bad. I was pretty pleased with the horse. 
um, this kind of Shire Horse um, style. He's come out probably better than Gandalf did. That. Up there. Quite pleased with how little details on Glamdring came out. Well, that's quite cool. And his staff, I was happy with some sort of uh, detailing down the woodwork there. Lighting's not great in here, I'm sorry. But yeah, he's, um, he's alright. I think he's pretty good. Um, there we go. They're fairly standard colours. You know, the horse was just done with a mix of basically Rhinox hide and um, Gawthor brown. Various kind of shades of that. The cloak was eshing grey and a bad and black. Um, the hat was uh, hideous blue, is it, or whatever that's now called, and mixing in um, pallid witch flesh. I just use my normal brand of kind of Gawthor brown, Bane blade brown, do all the straps and that sort of thing. So there we go. That is Gandalf done, and that is um, three of the four things I said I was going to do this week. But I'm actually going to cut it short because um, not that I've run out of time. This week's going very well for me, but this has already become quite a long hobby vlog, and I think. Um, Half an hour is kind of the real absolute max you want to have these videos. So what I'm actually going to do is get this one, finish this one, and then um, hopefully get my uh, next hobby vlog up um, as well this week. So essentially there might be two for me because I'm um, going away. I'm really um, churning away at the hobby this week, so I'm really chuffed. So um, this week I've obviously done the Spider Queen, finished the Spider Queen, finished getting off the Grey Mountain, and now you'll be watching this. And then what I'm going to be doing between now and my next hobby vlog is assembling Bulg and assembling that and converting those Gundabads. And hopefully um, before too long you'll see a hobby vlog about how I went through those various bits and bobs. But um, there we go. That's all for this week. I've finished Gandalf the Grey. He becomes my most commonly painted model with five versions of Gandalf the Grey um, now done in my collection. Um, really like this model and he will be riding to war in the SBG issue 4 bat rep that we'll be playing out next weekend. But um, if you want to see what I'm up to on Project Good and the Bad, um, check in in a couple of days for my next hobby vlog on that. Until then, don't forget to comment, like, share and subscribe. Support your Hobbit host by clicking in the links below. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Support your Hobbit hobby and happy strategy battle gaming.